my name is Tara, and I'm here to help raise the vibration of elevation. I hope that you'll enjoy my channel and that you'll take the time to go ahead and like and subscribe now. Thanks for joining. Good morning, everybody, and how are you? My name is Tara from the Vibration Elevation, and today I wanted to talk to you about making sweet memories. Um, see here, a lot of times people go through life and they have issues with their friends and family. Things come up, they have fights. Um, maybe they don't reconcile after those fights. Maybe they continue to stay in their separate worlds and their step separate universes. And that is not aspiring to ascension of love. That is not living in a place of love. And I know this firsthand. I know this firsthand because I have disconnected from my mom. Some of you may and some of you may not know my story. Um, as we go through these YouTube videos, I'm sure that you'll learn more and more about me and who I am. But when I was a little girl, when I was nine, I was violently attacked by a dog. It was a vicious attack where the dog actually pinned me to the ground. Um, I had 250 or 450 stitches in the shape of a question mark on my forehead, and I had another nine in my eyelid. No Novocaine in the eyelid. If you look, this eye does not go up. This eye goes up. This eye does not go up. It's because of the dog attack that I had. Many of you probably don't know this about me. Um, when that dog attacked me, my mother became somebody different. She was disconnected and not the same loving mother that I had always known as a child. Uh, I always felt a little bit of intense jealousy there, but never understood where it came from. Um, as I grew and as I got older, I started to realize that I'm a light worker. I'm one of the 144,000 light workers on this planet at this time, and I'm here for a reason. I'm here for the ascension of elevation for the masses, okay? And my mom, I don't think that she liked the fact that I vibrated at such a high frequency, that I needed to know everything, that I, I had an inquisitive mind that needed to know everything. I ended up moving out of my mom's house when I was about 15 years old. <coughs> Needless to say, to make a long story short, by the time I was 18, her and I dissolved our relationship and didn't really have any of a relationship for years and years and years and years and years. My three children basically don't even know their own grandmother. Um, and this is okay. This is part of the elevation of my soul. This is part of the ascension of my soul. This is part of the understanding of who I am. But what winds up happening is that you have this heartfelt void. Um, so I do miss the connection that I had to my mom. I miss the love that she showed me as a younger child. But even then, I think that maybe there was an issue going on. So anyway, getting back to the making of sweet memories, there is many times that I remember as a family unit going out and doing a lot of fun things. There is times that we went to family dinners, that we went to family baseball games, that we went to go see circuses and shows. We weren't a big vacation family, but we did do day trips. And those sweet memories are things that I could reflect back on to pull in that motherly energy that I need. Now, I was one that sought out my friends' mothers in order to get that motherly love and motherly energy given back to me. Um, in ways, I'd like to say that it worked. In ways, I'd like to say that being gifted the love from my friends' moms had helped me to ascend into a vibrant woman. But let's face it, your friend's mom is never going to be the exact same for you as your own mom would be. So I lacklustered the void of a motherly figure in my life. Um, that was until about the time I met my husband and his grandmother wound up at 18 years old mothering me in a loving and caring way and helping me to evolve. 
anyway, the sweet memories that I was talking about. Um, being in a family with a mother that probably didn't love me as much as I had hoped that a mother would love a child, um, perhaps being jealous of the child that she gave birth to. On my wedding day, she told me that the only reason he was marrying me was because I was pretty. So there's a lot going on there. Um, but what I do have to say is that the times that we spent as a family, I have in my heart and I always will. I have found forgiveness in my heart because forgiveness is a very important lesson on this earth to forgive her for how she treated me because like our savior taught us for they have no, no knowledge what they do. They know not what they do. My mother did not know how she was hurting me and she just deserves the forgiveness. But more than that, I deserve the forgiveness. I don't deserve to carry that cross of burden of thinking that something could have changed the dynamic of our relationship if I was a different child. Just wasn't going to happen. Um, it was like oil and water, but the memories of what she's taught me up until that certain age of maybe 11 um, was very important. Now, one of these things that we should take note of is that my mom had me before she got married and then she had my sister during the time of her marriage. Um, I'm not so sure she was in love with who my adopted father was. They were divorced within seven years, but there was, I was always in her way. It always felt as though I was in her way. And that's probably why I chose to move out by the age of 15 years old. But what I can tell you is that the sweet memories that we made as a family before she divorced my father, my sister's father, before I moved out when I was 15 years old, there were times when the bonding and the love felt real. And those are the memories that I have to hold on to for the motherly energy from her. Because if I hold on to anything else, any of the resentments, any of the angers, any of the hurts that she has bestowed upon me, that she has brought upon me, then I will not be able to elevate to a, a higher vibration. I will not be able to evolve my soul. So the fact that we have to focus on the positive memories instead of the negative memories, and then you can choose to cut out these toxic people. You can choose to not have anything to do with these people at all on your day-to-day -day basis, which is something that I have done. I have not had anything to do with my mom on a day-to-day -day basis for well over 18 years, maybe 20 years now, um, when my father passed away. She and I had a moment and the conversation took a turn to where I was maybe nine years old and she told me that I didn't know what the hell I was talking about and I simply looked at her and said, you don't know me or anything about me. We haven't spoken in years, so you don't know if I know what I'm talking about or not, but the attorney here does and the attorney will apprise you of what is protocol that happens at this stage. And I did happen to be right because I was knowledgeable, but she was trying to put me back into that position of when I was a child and submissive to her. And because of the sweeter memories, because of me allowing the forgiveness to happen, I was able to focus on that aspect. I was not going down the path of the drama of the open wounds. I was going down the path of well, here's the facts, and this is where we are now. So the sweet memories are going to be like dried flowers, where at one time the memories were bright and rosy, and they smelled good, and things flourished. But as time progressed, that died away. It withered away. It went to something else. I have to focus on the time when the flowers were fresh. I have to focus on the time when we made good, happy memories. In order for my soul not to become spoiled, and I don't mean spoiled as in given every opportunity in the world and over love, I'm talking about spoiled as in going sour, no longer being of a good vibrating frequency. So what I'm trying to say here is that every relationship in our life 
is placed there for a reason. It could be with a parent, it could be with a child, it could be with a spouse, it could be with a friend, it could be with a boss, but every one of those relationships is there to teach us something. And even the negative energy that emerges through a relationship for whatever reason has a lesson to teach. And what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to find the forgiveness. And it doesn't necessarily mean to go ahead and hang around and pal around with that person again, but it does mean to find that forgiveness and to remember that person with the sweet memories that they've shared with you and not with the hurt and the angers and the hostilities that have brought this relationship to the end of a cycle. Because if you can't allow the healing process to fully engage and wash over your body, well, then you're not being true to your true self. You're not being true to your soul. Our true soul and our true self wants to be in full forgiveness and full vibrating uh, uh, frequencies of love at all times. And when we harness this anger and we hold on to this resentment and we hold on to this eye for an eye mentality, we're not doing anybody any favors, especially not ourselves. So if you have practiced the art of forgiveness and you have forgot, forgiven somebody, and obviously we don't always forget what they do because that keeps us at our distance from them, but perhaps now is the next step for you to move on to the sweet memories and remembering what it was about this person that you had a good time with, remembering the good times that you shared and allowing a full healing to sweep in through your oversoul and elevating you up to the next frequency of vibration. Thank you so much for watching.